welcome to On Location, the real estate podcast brought to you by the Brown Real Estate Group, where we talk about location as it relates to real estate. I'm Rob Lobb, and with me as always is Melody Brown, all the way from France. Bonjour, Melody. <laughs> Bonjour, everybody. Been living in the U.S. for three years now, so I'm not all the way from France. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I got the wrong notes here. <laughs> They haven't been updated since 2017. <laughs> so much for our international guests. <laughs> I'm still international. I still have the citizenship of being French. Well, you might as well be in France because I, I can't. We tell don't know from yeah. from where the uh, virtual broadcast is. Well, it's been a while. Hopefully, no one missed our last episode. It was our best one yet. <laughs> It was so good that it was invisible. Like you had to like find it, you know? You have to code and <laughs> It's actually the April first episode. Exactly. The name is user three four five five hundred six hundred four four five, something like that. <laughs> Why are you giving away my Apple ID? <laughs> it's not that they didn't want it to do a podcast. We were so busy with uh, something that people here in San Francisco already know about, and it was the house moving. Our company moved a house from point A to point B. I guess it's different. Instead of moving the person from house to house like yeah. we normally do, <laughs> Tim decided to just move the house. Yeah. Bowler move. <laughs> and it was kind of a big deal. I mean... People heard about it all over the world, right? Yeah. Uh, I can attest that my dad sent me from France, from M6, for everyone that knows M6. Shout out to M6. <laughs> he saw on the news report that the house was moved. Uh, we then talked about it with everybody at our work, right? Keller Williams and another woman whose parents are from Swiss. She told us that her parents also had a news report about it. So it is definitely an international thing. A 5,000 square foot home, which is, that's kind of big no Pretty matter big. where you are. It's huge for San Francisco in terms of square footage. It's a big place. Moving down the street on wheels, biggest mobile home I've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people were asking me, is it really worth it to move a house? Why not just build a new one? Some of the numbers, the costs have been published. And of course, the the logistics of it were out there. But the figures and the numbers are not really what's ha uh, happening. What I think is the most important is that it hasn't been done in 50 years in the city. Yeah, it was pretty neat talking with Tim. He was saying when he was a kid, he saw people doing it. Yeah. And when I was over there, while it was being moved, there were families, kids out there <laughs> looking at this, you know, and, and it, for an adult to see this big house moving, I mean, it was pretty spectacular, but you could just see the look on the kids' faces. So to think of, you know, this kid watching this happen and maybe down the road, It'd be he the takes next part kid. in yeah. doing it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty neat to see that come full circle like that. Quite an accomplishment. Definitely. I think the question on everybody's tongue is why did we move the house to begin with? And you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but the two main things why that house was moved was first uh, for zoning. And I want you to explain a little bit about that later. And also for historic preservation. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So the big question people were texting me, like, why would you move a house <laughs> yeah. instead of building a new one? Is it that expensive? I mean, it is hard to find a contractor these days. People are pretty busy. But you're right. Zoning in, and historic preservation are really what uh, made this happen. Zoning being the guidelines which are set forth by the planning department and they define what you can build in a particular on a particular lot mm -hmm. so usually by neighborhood sometimes street to street that will change but it talks about the building bulk okay. the the width the volume of the building also the height of the building how tall can that be mm -hmm. 
any setbacks such as from the street or backyard requirements or side lot lines. What that means is that the same size parcel in different locations can be have something different built on it, something larger or smaller. Also, the actual use of the property will vary. Of course, yeah. So maybe it could be residential. Maybe it could be commercial. Maybe it could be both. That makes a particular lot most suitable for different things. And in this case, that large single family house was not the best use for that lot. Can you explain to me why it was not the best use under zoning allowance for that property? Franklin Street is a pretty busy street, three lanes wide. Yeah. Has a lot of large buildings there. And the actual height and bulk limit is 80 foot. So you could build roughly eight stories. So that's larger than the house that was there. Mm -hmm. Also, the lot itself is much larger than your typical San Francisco lot. The typical San Francisco lot, 25 by 100. Okay. This lot is... I, I forget exactly. It's it's probably twice that width. Mm -hmm. That means you can build a very large multi-unit condo building there. Okay, so why didn't we just tear down the old house and build a larger building then? The first house. In some places, that would be the answer. You've got a rundown old house, tear it down and build what you can build. Here in San Francisco, though, historic preservation is not only important, but it's very much mandated. <laughs> the home built in the late 19th century has historic significance. You know, it really has that San Francisco character that so many of the, you know, when people think of San Francisco, yeah, they the, think of homes like that. Yeah, Victorians. And yeah, I would agree with you. And that's what it was, a Victorian era building with the Italianate style. The good news is that it gets saved. The bad news is that you can't tear it down and you have to figure out a different way to maximize that lot without destroying the home. Yeah. So that square team was like, we can't tear down the house. We can't build another building. So they just go find a different place, move the house, put that building and then do something with that first parcel. Not that it would be open. Right, exactly. And and the tricky part there is that a vacant lot, even just to move that house to, is not that common. You know, we were running stats the other day. Uh, I think there's one active lot on the MLS right now in oh, San Francisco, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and your typical lot in San Francisco, I mentioned before, 25 foot wide. This house is actually wider than 25 feet. Yeah. So you're you're you can't just squeeze it in there. We don't have a home compressor. <laughs> so you have to find an extra large lot where you can move that to. Okay, so the cost of the move, even if you know it was pretty expensive, uh, it was like it was going to be actually less to move the house than to figure it out another solution, right? There really aren't a lot of options when you can't tear the house down. The real lesson here is that lot vacant as a buildable lot is much more valuable than the cost of the lot with the house on it plus the cost of moving the house. Tim recognized the potential highest and best use of this land and then set about determining how he was going to free up the site. Now that Tim was like, this is what we're going to do. This is the idea. You had to go to, you know, city and all this thing. Then even when this is all done, he still has to find that lot. And as you said, there is rarely those kind of size in San Francisco. Right. So creative thinking, as, as Tim's always really good at, <laughs> he was able to find a property, and that's the old mortuary, where there was enough room on Fulton Street there to, to move that building over, have room next to it to put the big house. You take a, a neglected mortuary no longer in use yeah. and this home, and it's going to end up being 17 new residential units over there on Fulton Street. Yes. So at the end, it's a big win-win for everyone. As you said, not only we're going to have 17 units on Fulton, but... Uh, the vacant lot is suitable to be a 48 new residential unit on Franklin. 
pretty good for <laughs> for a retired single family in a Viking commercial building. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're always talking about the housing shortage in San Francisco. Now you have this vacant lot with this great zoning where you can build a tall building, 48 units. So we save an old building. We save the character of it. The The mortuary is actually of the same period, oh. the late 1800s. So they look great next to each other. <laughs> That's all part of the city approval and such, but they look great next to each other. And we end up with over 60 units of new housing. We're just really happy to share that with you all because it is pretty much of a big deal, as we said, internationally. There was uh, footage in Europe that I can confirm. <laughs> uh, and as you said at the beginning, being in, uh, you were at the move and you saw all those kids and made you think like, oh, as Tim was saying 50 years ago, he, as he was living in San Francisco as a kid, he saw that the houses were moved like that. And to see those other kids that maybe one day will be, you know, the new team Brandon, be like, I'm going to move this house because I saw it 50 years ago. like. That well, that's the, cool. that's the inspiration, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, to, to, to think outside the box and, and not think, oh, this can't be done. It's been I mean, a project work, uh, he's been working on for a long time. Because I remember years. when I came yeah. here four years ago, it was already in talk. And four yeah, been, years before. <laughs> yeah, years in the making. Um, but it all starts with that vision. And, and you know, that's something that we see pretty regularly on, on all of our transactions. Mm-hmm. Uh, no obstacle too big and you know there's always a solution to kind of get it done and that's something that we try to bring to all of our transactions even if we're only moving the people from house to house instead of the house (laughs) there is a way we'll figure it out (laughs) whatever it's going to be absolutely and and i think it's great to get to talk about this and just kind of you know, we talk about location. And so to talk about why that location, you know, made sense to yeah. move the house and all that. So very much when you say, oh, well, it's a beautiful house, but it's in the wrong place. I mean, even that can be solved. Yeah, I see that pretty easily. <laughs> Quote, unquote. <laughs> no excuses to find your dream home. And then make it move. <laughs> So for those that don't know, we are recording in different places. We're using Zencaster. They have a new video feature. It's pretty cool. It's the first time I get to see <laughs> you while we're recording. <laughs> That's true. I mean, here we are. You know, we're kind of working from home for, it's a year now, right? Yeah, it's been a year. St. Patrick's Day has come and gone. <laughs> the pandemic has come. And not, gone. <laughs> not quite gone yet, unfortunately. So a lot of working from home, a lot of working from places that we probably didn't plan on. <laughs> as I look around my yeah, I should... studio space. Yeah, there's sometimes where I'm like, oh, I wish people could see it, but it's also like, no, I don't want people to see this. <laughs> I think everyone has a sense of now what it's like, oh, I'm going to be on Zoom. Yeah. So I need to at least put on a nice shirt. Yeah, it up. <laughs> <laughs> and and probably by now, a lot of people have kind of figured that out. Going forward, it seems like a lot of people will actually work from home. Yes. So on that note, I know you were doing a little digging into recommendations for a home office or what to look for. Yeah. The luckiest of us have been working from home on our computer. I think, and I know I'm not the only one, it's really hard now that we're working where we're living to separate both and not always stay on your computer or just like have a lack of productivity. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying that now it's been a year that it's like kind of groundhog day, you know? (laughs) And as much as I think it's really comfortable to work in pajamas and I love it, I know that it can be complicated when there is no separation between you working and your partner is working or you working and your children are doing school next to you the pet goes through and type down on the keyboard. Like we've seen all of those, you know? Yeah. We've seen all kinds of things on zoom. Some of which we'd really rather forget. (laughs) We also saw a lot of, a lot of our clients moving last year and buying places where they had another room. So they had their own office, uh, a dedicated room that they could use 
that that's obviously the easiest solution is yes. if you have an extra space that you can kind of dedicate to that, get that separation that you talked about. So there is going to be two categories. The people that have uh, the chance to have an office and the people that are still, you know, working on couch living room. So let's go with the people who already have an office. I'm currently in one. Uh, that's not where I work normally. I rather work on my couch. But for the podcast, I am in uh, my husband's office. Uh, my first advice, and that's, I think, the the, the first two are going to be really important, is to have a good chair. Uh, my husband has a gaming chair. That's what I'm on right now. And so you can have a great posture and be, you know, straight, nice uh, in front of the computer. If you have a good posture, then you won't have those headaches. You won't have, you know, all those um, back pain and all those things. A lot of people, if you don't have a dedicated office, you don't have an office chair. No. And, and that chair that you have at your office is, is kind of the starting point for something ergonomically correct, right? It's a really good chair. <laughs> it's like those gaming chairs where I'm like really chilling. <laughs> yeah, it looks comfortable. I'm sitting on a, a stool here. It's actually quite comfortable for podcasting, but I would not want to work on this yeah. at the computer all day long. Everything kind of goes together, right? So your desk, has to have you know the right height for your chair exactly when you're picking out the size of your office what about your desk all depends on what you want the desk needs to be as at least as big as you you being comfortable with your hands like this i don't know how to explain them straight right so for those that are <laughs> listening and cannot see which is everyone <laughs> Big enough for your computer and whatever else you might pile next to it. Yeah, space for your hands to move and maybe more space. I'm currently on the, I think it's, it could be called C shape, C shape okay. at our office. What I love the most about my desk is that I have two screens. And I've heard that from a lot of friends working from home. That was the thing they missed was at the office, they had multiple screens. Yes, so much. So you need a desk big enough for a couple of screens and the right height or the chair that will adjust to the right height. Let's say I've got all that, which which I don't. I've actually got a small table here for my glass of water. But if you did have all that. And not stuff that's about to fall on the microphone. <laughs> what would I put there? What else what else would be helpful? <laughs> It's uh, important for you to have on your desk things that you like. So like when you have a bad day, you can look at the picture of your dog or your mom, your children, or those plants that you like so much just to reset you. I got a plant. It came in with a table. For... You have to water it though. <laughs> this is an aloe plant, so I actually don't need to water don't it really very often. <laughs> and now that you have everything this, it sounds like it's perfect. But you also, you and I know, and I think I know it pretty good now, there is a good 99% chance if it didn't happen to you this year, you're going to spill your tea or your coffee. I spilled my tea on myself two meetings ago. <laughs> I missed that. Uh, I guess it wasn't too hot. I didn't hear any screams of pain. No, I was on mute because it was like, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's really important to now that you're going to be eating at your desk. A lot of people do it. Even, you know, at the office, I kind of do eat at my desk. I would advise to buy this air compressor. So it's a can with just air, just oxygen that you would put on your keyboard. And it would blow away, you know, particles of food or dust or whatever so that you can keep your keyboard clean because it is known uh, by certain studios that now keyboards that as we use them every day we don't really clean them it's as dirty as like the toilet so whether you're eating on the toilet or on your keyboard <laughs> make sure you clean it this or you can buy a uh, this little desk vacuum that look like those table vacuum you see at a restaurant or things like that and you just do it like that you know just to be clear, I don't think the compressed air is actually oxygen. We'll leave that to you guys to read the label. Yeah. Yeah, and you talk about spilling. Yes. That's where plexiglass or glass could come in too. Yeah, just put a plexiglass, you know, you can find that pretty easily and just put it on top so you don't have to take care of the mess because we know 
uh, just tea everywhere on the computer, tea everywhere on or coffee, whatever. On your desk, it's just going to be a mess. Your day is going to start bad. <laughs> if you don't get your tea or coffee into you, that's going to definitely slow up your start to the day. Yep. The last few hacks we have for people who are working on an office is that the colors are not too aggressive because it's going to mess up with your head. And also not to be too hard on yourself. You know, it's a hard time for all of us and the productivity that you do does not uh, equal your worth. It's hard to work from home sometimes, not every day. uh, But I know that, you know, sometimes people are missing the ambiance you have at the office or your co-workers or all those things. So just be kind to yourself. That's well said and certainly something to keep in mind. Like you mentioned earlier, we're lucky to be able to work from home. Not everyone's able to and certainly been lucky to have a lot of those people out doing those frontline things to keep the rest of us going and deliver that coffee so we can get the day started and spill it on our computer. (laughs) (laughs) And the color suggestion is a good one. We don't think about how that may have an impact. Yes. Take the time, make the office yours. But if you don't have the home office, it could be a little harder. Now we're trying to make do with the space that we have. Yes. Trying to fit in another purpose that maybe we didn't have earlier. So any tips for those that have been forced to make more out of the space they had? I personally have been doing it for a year. I've been working on my couch with the computer either on the coffee table or on my knees. You can buy a mouse pad just for the same reason to stay, to have that posture really straight. Basically always keep your posture in mind, right? Yes. It's easy to start to bend in a C shape and gravitate towards your screen, try to sit up straight. Yeah, you're going to feel it tomorrow morning if you're not too much bothered by your posture right now. In a week, you will. In this same category, my little sister bought a tray and it has kind of a cushion, what we call a lap desk. Okay. And you can find one for 20, you can find extremely good one for 60, but like, for 15 20 on Amazon, you can find one that is definitely good enough. And same, we'll help you with the posture and we'll put a stationary. Okay, so make a desk where you, you don't even have a desk. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> to come back to the previous point in the other category, which is we have to share space with other people that are working. Some of us are sharing the living room with uh, your husband, your wife, your flatmate, whoever who is certainly working too, certainly, you know, talking on Zoom and all those things. If it's bothering you that, you know, little Clara is uh, singing the Pledge of a Legend in school and little Mark is, you know, talking about the astrology with school or whatever, uh, I would advise, and this is a study that has been done a good 20 years ago, uh, to focus it's better to listen to non-lyrical music. Maybe classical or other instrumental stuff. Okay. Yeah, as long as there is no lyric, or you can go for some lyrics you, uh, from a language you don't know or excel to. I've got a set of noise-canceling ear things as well. It sounds, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Probably good advice from all of it is don't forget to take a break. Yeah. At the end of the day, humans are not conceived to stay on the computer for 10 hours straight. The the light of the computers are really harming to your eyes. And that goes with my, you know, one of my point. I've been wearing glasses for 24 years now. I've been wearing them since I was six months. (laughs) So (laughs) this is the best advice I can give you. And for sure, you should believe me. Uh, for people who are wearing glasses already or for people who would like to have glasses uh, when they do activities like being on the phone, being on the computer, watching TV, I would 100% recommend to take the blue reflect on your glasses. Is that a coating that they put on the lenses? Yes. You can't see it when you're wearing those glasses, 
But right now, as we are on Zoom, I'm sure if I go a little down, you can see a blue reflection on my glasses. I thought it was your microphone. No, no, no. that's the glasses. Yeah, when I see the screen reflected, I see a little blue. And yeah, in you there. can you can see the screen for sure. And the joke was because Melody has a blue microphone. Yeah. So. <laughs> you talked a, a bit about the desk and how to set that up in your office space. Mm -hmm. We're now we're, we don't have that office space. You're working in the living room. We're, yeah. You have like a workspace and a non-workspace. Yeah. That's what I do personally. So that's what I'm going to advise everybody. So I have a couch and in front of it, I have a coffee table. I work on the left. So I'm on the left of the couch with the computer doing the things I have to do. When it's break time, the computer stays on the left. I move to the pillow just next to it. And this is break time. This is where I eat. This is where I take my tea. This is where I'm on my social media uh, to take my uh, break. Uh, this is also where is my Nintendo Switch, which I kind of do play uh, at my break now. Right. Don't don't be like, oh, well, I'm right here. I might as well just get back to work. Exactly. Yeah, because you wouldn't. If you were at your office, you wouldn't do that. Well, it sounds like dinner's ready over there, so... I should let you go from your office to your office. Yeah, from my husband's office to my office in the living room. It's a big commute. Gotta go check on that uh, gratin dauphinois. Sounds delicious. But I didn't make a, a bechamel for it, so don't tell any French people about it. All right, well, we won't broadcast this one. Don't tell them. <laughs> but as they say, don't drop the potato. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's more broadly what that means. complicated than that. <laughs> We'll get into that maybe next time. Everyone, before we leave, do send us your question and all you want to know or what you want to do in the podcast to podcast at areonlocation.com. You can uh, ask them in English, French, and Spanish. And currently learning Japanese, please do not send me any question in Japanese. Send them in Japanese. Talk about Benihana. <laughs> Benihana, love, love, forever. <laughs> Thanks, Melody. Bye, Rob. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>